वेलकम एस्पिरेंट्स इन एडुकेमीज ऑप्शनल रिविजन वीडियोज टूडे इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट बिलोंग्स टू द जियो मॉर्फोलॉजी एंड टॉपिक इज फ्लूवियल लैंड फॉर्म्स फ्लूवियल लैंड फॉर्म्स मीन्स द लैंड फॉर्म्स दैट हैव बीन फॉर्म बाय द एक्शन ऑफ वॉटर सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो विल डिस्कस द होस्ट ऑफ लैंड फॉर्म्स लाइक विल स्टार्ट विद वी शेप वैली रिवर टेरेसेस मियाडर्स alluvial fans flood plains natural levees and finally delta so let's start first is v shaped valley and before i explain you about the v shaped valleys there is a, another land form that is called as rills r i l l s basically rills are the small narrow channels that have been formed on the ground due to surface runoff you might have seen in the agriculture field like small small rills due to the watering of agriculture fields and these rills over a period of time gets widened why they are widened because of the valley erosion or because of the vertical erosion that have been done by the rivers or the waters rills get transformed into gullies gullies get transformed into ravines and ravines finally get transformed into v shaped valleys look at this valley that is being shown here this is a v shaped valley where it when viewed in a cross section we are seeing a narrow river channel is continuously cutting it down and it is forming a v shaped structure that is why it is called as v shaped valley and remember one thing that the rivers form the v shaped valley while the glaciers form the u shaped valley glaciers are known to form u shaped valley and in the video of the glacial landforms we have discussed ke how glaciers are playing their role in the formation of u shaped valleys fine so once the v shaped valley is formed and another thing is that these rills uh, gullies ravines v shaped valley they are always formed when the rivers are in youthful stage as they are in a youthful stage they are always close to the source they moves on the steeper slopes and as they moves on the steeper slopes they get more power to erode vertically another is this vertical erosion like this is the mountain okay and this is some sort of vertical erosion that is being done over a period of time you will see that as the erosion is being continued this would be like this and these are called as gorges or the gorges are also the valleys where we have a narrow channel this is a narrow channel and we have a equal bottom as well as equal top the top and the bottoms are equal and these have a narrow valleys with steep slopes over a period of time these gorges can transform into canyons how and how the canyons look like canyons look like this okay so canyons are also extension of gorges however the only difference with the canyons and gorges is that canyons have a wider top this top is wide this bottom is narrow so canyons have a wider top and narrow bottom and they also have a steep slopes with some narrow channel in it and canyons are also called as i shaped valleys so on the prominent examples that have been given for the gorges gorges ka aap dekhenge to that is indus gorge and for canyons the prominent example is colorado canyons fine so now we'll be moving to the next landform that is river terraces river terraces are also erosional landforms like the v shaped valley and the gorges and canyons river terraces are basically narrow flood surfaces that are formed at the both sides of the river you can see this is the narrow and the flood surface narrow and flood surfaces that are formed at both the ends of a river as the river is here we are, these are the two ends of the river and these are also called as remnants these are the remnants of older valley okay earlier the water was here when the water was here this was the older part and when the water comes here as the cutting increases vertically it is getting engaged in the vertical erosion this is the part that has been created or i can say this is a new valley that is being created within the older valley so this is how the cutting is been going on and as it is cutting it appears like a terrace terrace like structures 
these are the steps or terrace like structures and that is why it is called as paired terraces this is called as terraces but we also have two categories of terraces one is unpaired terraces and other is paired terraces let me show you again these are the paired terraces these are the unpaired terraces and paired terraces are formed at equal heights when river undergoes vertical erosion you can see these are at equal heights these are the terraces that are formed at equal heights this terrace is also formed at equal heights and this terrace is also formed at equal heights so these terraces are formed at equal heights that is why they are called as pair terraces and these pair terraces are formed when the river is engaged only in the vertical erosion fine however we have also seen the unpaired terraces unpaired terraces means unpaired terraces are also step like structure but here you will see the river the height of the terraces are not same look at this here the terrace is this but here the terrace is bit higher than that similarly you can see the terrace or flat like structure is here but on the other end it is just above it so these unpaired structures or the unpaired terraces are formed when the river is engaged simultaneously in the vertical as well as lateral erosion theek hai if it had been only engaged in the vertical erosion it would have been creating the pair terraces but if it is engaged in the vertical as well as the lateral erosion in that case it will cre create the unpaired terraces and unpaired terraces means basically the height or the surfaces the flat surfaces are not at the same height okay next we are going to see meanders meanders are the erosional and depositional landforms they are considered in both the category of erosional and depositional landforms and these are the curves or bends that are find within the movement of a river this is the channel of a river and in between you can see that these are the loops or curves that you can easily see these curves or loops are the meander or i i can say this is the meandering nature of river this is considered as outer bank or outer bank is also called as concave bank while on the other side we have a inner bank this is a inner bank or inner bank is also called as convex bank fine one side we have a outer bank other side we have a inner bank and basically when the river is moving look at this when the river is moving and it is coming through this channel it is showing or experiencing more erosion at this side erosion would be greater than the deposition but at this side the deposition is more or we can say that deposition is greater than erosion as the erosion on this outer bank is more so we will be having a steep slopes and deposition is more on the inner bank so here we will be having these gentle slopes so that is why the steep slopes are called as cliff slope and the deposition is greater than erosion on the inner bank here we have a gentle slopes and these are called as slip of slope theek okay? hai this is also written here slip of slope because the deposition is more on this side and erosion is more on this side another point that is related to the meander is about incised meanders how the incised meanders are formed look sometimes there is elevation sometimes there is elevation of landform and when the landform gets elevated rivers get rejuvenated rivers get rejuvenated or their base level also gets changed so when the rivers get rejuvenated they do more vertical erosion and if the vertical erosion is being done here more obviously it will do some more vertical erosion here also but still the deposition will be greater here and erosion will be greater here but on both the sides we will see the gradient or the slope is increased the gradient or slope is becoming steeper before the previous one so in this case this is called as incised meanders fine when the river undergoes some sort of rejuvenation there is some intense vertical erosion that is being shown and the intense vertical erosion will be shown on both sides but still we have a more erosion here and less erosion here this will show that the gradient or slope is being becoming steeper on both sides and this is called as incised meanders another point that is related to the meander is that as the deposition deposition is more here 
sometimes the deposited sediments get deposited close to the this bank that is called as inner bank and the deposition of sediments in the form of crescent like this like this like this or air like this this these deposition of sediments in the form of crescent are called as point bars these are called as point bars another thing that is also associated with the meander is oxbow lake and although this oxbow lake is formed by the erosional action but it is considered within the category of depositional landform and how it occurs you know as the rivers are meandering and as the loop is becoming more close to one another these loops are coming closer to one another and here you can see the loops have come so close to one another that this outer bank this outer bank or this outer loop has completely cut off from the mainstream and the river will straight away jump to this part that is this channel this process is also called as evolution so this the cut off part this cut off part that have been cut off from the mainstream river is called as oxbow lakes and oxbow lakes over a period of time you know turns into the swamps or wetlands the example of oxbow lake is kamar lake which is an oxbow lake that is being formed by the meanders of budhi gandak river and in fact it is the asia's largest oxbow lake also next is alluvial fans alluvial fans are also the depositional features and when the river descends from the mountains or the slopes of the hills it brings a lot of sediments like this if the river is descending from here it brings a lot of sediments and all these sediments are getting deposited at the base of the hills in the form of a fan shaped structure these sediments that have been deposited here these are called as alluvial fans we have also seen the alluvial fans and alluvial cones what are the basic difference between the alluvial fans and alluvial cones why it is called as cone also because a certain section when viewed from a top appears to be in the shape of cone in alluvial fan the material that have been deposited is coarser in alluvial cone the material that is deposited is very fine alluvial fans are deposited on gentle slopes alluvial cones are deposited on steeper slope alluvial fans are formed due to slow deposition alluvial cones are deposited in very fast manner or this sudden deposition is due to some floods it can be due to landslide also fine and when the river moves over the alluvial fans it makes distributaries or i can say the river is divided into numerous channels while in contrast to this when the river moves over alluvial cone it always moves in concentrated form as the sediments here are fine so that is why it moves in a concentrated form while it gets disturbed or it gets divided into numerous channels or distributaries over alluvial fans and many alluvial fans when there are many alluvial fans lying one close to another these alluvial fans together called as bardas these are together called as bardas or b a j a d s bardas fine so this was about the alluvial fans next we are moving to the natural levees and flood plains these are also the deposition landforms and these are the natural levees sometimes when the river is moving and some of the sediments get piled up close to the river on both sides of the bank the elevated ridges these are the elevated ridges on both sides of the river and these elevated ridges are called as levees and these have always coarse sediment deposition elevated ridges and they are useful for preventing the natural flooding also however if these levees are broken they can bring some serious consequences or they can bring the nearby areas flood in nearby areas next is flood plains flood plains when the river is flowing river is carrying a lot of sediments within its flow and sometimes these sediments get deposited on the nearby area look at this the dots that have been shown here these are the sediments that have been deposited over a longer period of time and these deposited sediments are called as flood plains the key here is that coarser sediments are close to the rivers while the finer sediments are far away from the rivers flood plains have both the coarser sediments as well as the finer sediments finer sediments are away and coarser sediments 
are always close to the flood plains and these flood plains are very fertile and are known for agriculture activities also next is delta delta is also a depositional landform it is basically i can say it is triangular in shape and it is a landform which forms when the river empties or discharges all its sediments into the sea here you can see the river is flowing and it is bringing a lot of sediments all the sediments have been deposited or discharged into the river and resulting in the formation of delta and the conditions that are required for the formation of delta that river must have a longer course because if the river have a longer course it would have a lot of sediments and these sediments must neither be coarse nor fine if they are too coarse they can never reach to the sea if they are too fine they can easily swept away and the river must be in senile stage or you can say the river must be in a mature stage so that its speed gets reduced as the speed get reduced it its power get reduced and it will start depositing the sediments so this was about a delta although we have many other deltas that can be in the shape of arcuate arcuate delta which have a shape of arc these deltas are like this and we have a bird food delta also because the shape of the delta of the bird food is like the foot of a bird or the claw of a bird okay this this is like a bird food delta we have a estuarine delta also how the estuarine delta looks like suppose this is a river which is discharging its water and sometimes the sediments get deposited here and there have been continuous battle going on from the sea waves sea waves is trying to sweeping it away and rivers is sometime trying to bring in more sediments in this area so ultimately what we will see these sediments get close to the edges of the estuaries here and the middle part gets removed away by any of the sediments so these delta is called as estuarine delta so overall we have seen few of the landforms that are associated with the fluvial landforms or associated with the river water such as valleys gorges canyons we have seen the meanders flood plains point bars and finally delta so it was all about this thank you and have a nice day